Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville YouTube channel. For this video, we're going to take a look at another Family Handyman article. This one is titled, 10 Things People Don't Know How to Do Around the House Anymore. You can see what I know how to do, what you know how to do. Maybe we'll learn a few things along the way. Although, I highly doubt it because, you know, I love these Family Handyman articles because they are so bad. They are incredibly awful, lazy. They're so bad, they're fun bad. It's like... An absolutely trash movie that you just watch to the end because you want to see how bad does this really get. And really, these things kind of encapsulate everything that is wrong with media and journalism in general. Because I, I get the feeling they spent more time trying to figure out the title for the article. And then once they got the title, they're like, okay, now how do we make content to put in for that title? Because all they want is to be able to put that on social media, put it at the top of the page to get people to click on it. Once people click on it, they really don't give a damn if you read the whole article or not. And it's absolute trash every time. It's lazy, it's awful, it sucks. And that's what makes it fun bad. So, starts out here. Some say it's because people are too focused on their phones to take the time to learn how to do everyday tasks. I kind of agree that people are too focused on their phones, but I'm telling you what, I've learned tons of stuff from my phone. I can't remember, I can't tell you how many times I've been in the middle of a project and then I got to whip out my phone and open up YouTube and look for a video that shows me how to specifically do something or a portion of the task that is at hand. So it's a very powerful tool. Basically all of the world's knowledge is in your pocket. Um, so you can't be too overly harsh about phones here. Uh, the others blame schools for not teaching basic life skills, which I agree with completely because I remember when I was in school many, many moons ago, in Illinois at that time at least, probably still, they required three years of English in high school. Three years! In contrast, we only needed one year of science and two years of math. So you're telling me that English, at a, at a point in your life when everyone already knows how to speak and write English by the time you get to high school, probably, hopefully, unless you go to some of the crap schools around here, then <laughs> good luck. But the point being is you're telling me that's important than these other two uh, subjects that actually could provide you with the knowledge and life skills to get a job? Like journalists, the, the, you just need to know basic English. Here's my, my, my main problem with the three years of English thing. The purpose of language is to effectively communicate an idea from one person to another or to a group of people. Basic grammar and knowing words, you just have to know the basics. I don't need three years of high school English after I've already learned these things. I don't need to know about prepositions and prepositional phrases and you can't start a sentence with and or but unless this situation or all that bullshit that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that the idea is communicated effectively. Spelling, grammar, 90% of it is crap. And people want to argue with me, but I am 100% right. And if you don't agree with me, you are 100% wrong. There is no gray area at all. Anyway... Let's get on to the article. I just have to do my English rant because it's incredibly stupid. Speaking of incredibly stupid, I do not like number one. Kill a bug with a newspaper. This is 10 things people don't know how to do around the house. And number one is kill a bug with a newspaper. If you are trying to entice people to get through all 10 things, this is about the worst possible way I could think of to start it. People don't know how to kill a bug with a newspaper. They wrote the title, and then they're sitting there at their computer just twiddling their thumbs, like, oh, okay, what are ten things people know how to do? And there must be like a fly flying around their head, and they completely whiffed on it. And it was like, oh, number one, they can't hit a bug with a newspaper. Anyone with any athletic ability at all can kill a damn bug. Okay, maybe it's a little more difficult when it's flying through the air, and then it's like a damn screwball going all over the place. But if it's just sitting there on a desk, this is not a hard task. Who can't do this? So we go on to the problem is very few people have a newspaper in their home. You do know that it's not mandatory for it to be a newspaper. It's not like newspapers are made out of some special chemical that kills bugs on contact. You got a magazine? You got a notebook? Hell, use your aforementioned phone. Just not too... 
too hard. You might crack the screen. But it's hard enough to kill a bug. You could do it. I guarantee you could do it. There's towels, toilet paper. There's all sorts of things in your house that you could kill bugs with. How about a ten top ten list of things in your house that you can use to kill bugs? I don't like how it's starting. Kill a bug with a newspaper. Are you kidding me? Number two. Get this damn ad out of here. Use a clothes iron. Okay, this one I'll agree with. I couldn't iron clothes if my life depended on Like, I can put an iron on clothes, but I'm sure there's some technique or something to make it look good or, or going down, like, the collar or something. I, I've had no reason to ever iron anything. Nor do I own an iron. Number three is make a pot of coffee. Who the hell can't make a pot of coffee? You know how easy it is to make coffee? When was the last time you saw someone younger than 30 make a straight up pot of coffee? Well, as a daily coffee drinker, that's my coffee mug right there. I've been drinking a lot of coffee every day since my early 20s. So less than 30, I myself, a few short years ago, would have been in that category. And people who can't afford $10 cups of coffee from Starbucks, or no, let me let me rephrase that. The people that complain they need $15 minimum wage because it's a living wage. you got to give me a living wage. How am I supposed to afford my brand new iPhone and my $10 cup of Starbucks coffee unless you give me a living wage. You expect me to drink? What is the thing? My Maxwell House, House coffee costs like eight bucks for an entire tub that lasts like a month. That thing's like ten cents a cup, okay? You don't need fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage if you're drinking ten cent coffee. People are stupid. That's the problem. They're stupid people. Anyway, Obviously, look, I don't like anyone younger than myself. So as I get older, the portion of the population that I can get along with dwindles, especially with the coronavirus going around because all the people are getting old people are getting killed off. So uh, I don't know people under 30. I don't want to talk to anyone under 30. And maybe they don't drink coffee, but that's mostly because they're stupid people. Because their argument here is not that they don't drink coffee at all. It's the straight up pot of coffee thing is the key in the sentence. They're saying that they drink the goofy ass uh, frappuccino latte Kama Sutra. <laughs> I don't know what bullshit, okay? So, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Let's move on. So, so far I don't know how to iron clothes, but I know the other ones. Number four, sew on a button or mend a tear. Okay, you put two things in there. Like, I can sew a button. I could probably mend a tear, too. Just, look, I know how to sew, fool. I'm a well-rounded individual. I absolutely could sew a button on. I could probably mend a tear, but it would look like trash. I can sew. Let's see. Avid quilters and sewers out there. Okay. One, I would not say there are many avid quilters and sewers. Going back to the coronavirus thing, most of your avid quilters are going to be older Older population people, I would say 90%. There's going to be some goofy-ass, artsy person who's 25. Who's, oh, I love to sew. Okay, whatever. But you are in the extreme minority. They're all old people. And I also don't even get this sentence. There are many avid quilters and sewers out there, but the number of people who can replace a button or stitch up a small tear has seriously dwindled. Do you mean it has seriously dwindled among the avid quilters and sewers? So they can quilt and sew, but they can't replace a button? I don't understand the sentence, because at first you're trying to say how many people there are that are out there that can quilt and sew, and then the back half of the sentence you're saying, no, it's seriously dwindled. And honestly, I think pretty much anyone could sew a button. If you gave them thread and a needle, they'd figure it out. It's not the most difficult task in the world. It's kind of like swatting a bug with a newspaper. Let's be honest. The making a pot of coffee, I can understand some people not knowing how to do it. Maybe you've never seen coffee made before. But it would take all of 10 seconds to learn. 
It's not like it cannot be learned. Number five, wash a car. It may seem like washing a car doesn't require any particular knowledge or skill. However, it is possible to do it wrong. And many people take their car to a car wash instead of dragging out the garden hose, soapy bucket, and scrubbing mitt. Sometimes that's because they see it as easier and less time consuming. And for people living in apartments, there may be no place for a DIY car wash. It's not completely wrong. I mean, if you're really stupid and just grabbed like a wire brush and thought, oh, I got to scrub this mud off my bumper with a wire brush. Yeah, you can do it wrong. Or, you know, you're not supposed to use like uh, dishwashing soap on your car because it can harm it and stuff. So there's definitely things you can do wrong. I guess um, a lot of people would not know how to wash their car, but they're probably completely oblivious to not knowing how to wash their car. They probably think they're doing it just fine because... It's cleaner when they're done. So, hey, look at my car. It's cleaner. It's been washed. It's fine. And they probably don't care. If you really care about your car or if you have a car that's uh, of any quality at all and you care about cars at all, you'll learn how to wash your car. A lot of this stuff, I feel like if people don't know how to do it, it's because they just don't give a shit. It's not that they're incapable of doing it. Let's go on to number six. We're over halfway there. Grow tomatoes. Who the hell wants to grow a tomato? I hate tomatoes. You can grow tomatoes almost anywhere. In a garden. On a balcony. As long as there's sun. Uh, and water. And dirt. And seeds. You don't just randomly start growing in that... Anywhere that there's sun. be growing like grass in your lawn. Many people are all about knowing where their food comes from. And that it is organic. Okay. First off. Who gives a shit that their food is organic? I don't know these people. It sounds like coastal people. The whole organic food thing. Don't care. And you're saying many people care. And they also care where it comes from. I don't think most people care where it comes from. I don't think most people give any thought to where it comes from. When you go to the grocery store and you're looking at the tomatoes, are you looking for where it comes from? Like, ooh, this one's in Honduras, and this one was made in Georgia, and this one's from El Salvador, whatever. I don't know, I don't know why I picked those places. I meant Georgia the country, not the state. Uh, but, you know, uh, I don't like this person. I just don't like the person who wrote this. I can tell six things into their top ten that me and you would not be friends. They're not interested in actually growing it themselves. Planting and caring for the plant seems like too much work for something that can be easily purchased. It's actually kind of a good argument. Kind of a good argument. If I can buy something at the store relatively cheap and I have no personal desire to grow it myself, why should I go through the hassle of doing so? Now your argument could be that, hey, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And you can't find a lot of stuff in stores. So people who were prepared have the upper hand. Well, congratulations. It's the first time you're right since 1918. It's been over a hundred years since you were right with that damn argument. Bravo. Starting next year, I'll go back to being right for the next hundred. <laughs> Number seven, sharpen a knife. Now this one I can't do. I mean, I have this little bench top or tabletop knife sharpener, and it does work. It does fine. It sharpens a knife, but knowing how to use this little rod object, whatever it's called, probably called a knife sharpener of some sort. No, I have no idea. I've never used one. It looks like it'd be used for, like, kitchen knives, and, or at least maybe more, most commonly. I, I don't go in the kitchen. I don't do anything in the kitchen. Uh, frozen pizza or grilled cheese is about as good as it gets for me, and um, I don't need a knife like that for either of those. Many people have grown up learning to fear anything that has that has the potential to be dangerous. Well, everything has the potential to be dangerous, so if that were true, you'd be afraid of everything, including your organic tomatoes. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Yes, it is. If you're afraid of everything, how is that not necessarily a bad thing? That is a bad thing. You should not be afraid of everything. Sounds like a very awful way to live, actually. But in the case of a task life like knife sharpening, the trepidation can be unfounded. Well, it can be, it could also be founded. I mean, if you are 
not uh, careful, lose a limb. With the proper equipment and technique, DIY sharpening of regular kitchen knives can be quite safe. Yeah, you just have to not be a dumbass. That's pretty easy. The alternative is to have knives professionally sharpened or replace them when they're dull. Whatever. Number eight. Make a bed with a top sheet. Okay. Couldn't tell you last time I made my bed. Never, probably. Slowly but surely, the top sheet is becoming obsolete. This is new information to me. Due to the proliferation of the duvet. I don't even know what that is. Apparently it goes on top because they're saying it replaces the top sheet. With its removable cover, people are opting out of the seamlessly unnecessary top sheet. The top sheet is not unnecessary at all. That is the only thing I use most of the time. I don't know. All winter, I keep my my heat at 60 degrees. And just need a sheet. I'm good to go. In the summer, less than that. I don't even know what a duvet is, but I definitely don't need one. And I'm not getting rid of my damn sheet. (laughs) This one's so dumb, I don't even want to talk about it. I'm sure I can figure out how to make a bed. I don't know about the hospital corner scrap, though. Number nine. Fix a clogged sink. I can use a plunger. When a kitchen or bathroom sink is draining very slowly or not at all, Monica would bore boiling hot water down it. It actually works a lot of the time, too. Many people opt for pouring liquid or solid chemicals down the drain in hopes of a miracle. It's not miracles. It's called science. Science. There's companies that have probably put, I don't know, millions of dollars into research on these chemicals that are miracles. And uh, maybe they work, maybe they don't, but it is not uh, a miracle. It's called science. Maybe if you took less English classes, you would know about science. Sometimes this works, but it always causes a dangerous situation. No. No. If those chemicals spray back out of the drain at someone not wearing eye protection. Happens to me all the time. Pour things down the drain and it says, go to hell, and it just spits it right back out at you. Just spits at you right in the eye. It's especially problematic if the chemicals don't work and then someone has to plunge, snake, or open up the drain, which is now full of toxic sludge. This article is toxic sludge. So rather than pouring and hoping, science, there are effective methods for unclogging sinks, and they don't require much equipment or skill. Okay, then. And let's wrap this thing up with number 10. That's gross. Fix a clogged toilet has many of the same properties as fixing a clogged sink. There's some similarities there. As with sinks, oh, she's even going to say, as with sinks, number 9 and number 10 are a lot alike. I couldn't think of 10, but you can't say the 9 things people don't know how to do, so we got to just throw in an extra. Many people, are, many people aren't comfortable working on anything plumbing related because they're afraid they'll make the situation worse. The truth is, it's pretty hard to ruin your toilet with a plunger. Yep. I agree. For once, there are the basic instru- Here are the these are the basic instructions for blah blah blah. I'm plugging the toilet. All right. Well, I don't know how to iron. I don't know if I can make the bed as fancy as they could. I hate tomatoes, but I could probably grow them if I had to. I can't sharpen a knife, not with that damn thing, because I've never tried. I would imagine it's not that difficult. And yeah, that's about it. All right, guys. I love going through these articles because I, I just—I think the people are so stupid. I think they are so awful, and they pump these things out by the hundreds. <laughs> hey, I guess it's working for them. They are still gainfully employed. So, thanks for watching. Give the video a like. Subscriber, not a subscriber. I'll see you guys next time.